Let's see how we can apply PMI dimensions to a 3D model, which are actually able to drive geometry. We'll use this phi space to illustrate this. Focusing our attention to the slot which runs through the middle of the part, we'll apply some vertical and horizontal dimensions in order to control its size. We can see that as we select our dimensions, the Live Rules panel appears in the same way it does when we push and pull geometry to modify it with the steering wheel. As such, the Live Rules settings will be honoured as we change a dimensional value. We can see this happening here with symmetry firstly switched off, and now with it switched on. Dimensions can be altered dynamically with the scroll wheel on your mouse or by typing in a value. Changing this vertical dimension, we can see it is capable of modifying the height of the slot, but we can also toggle the direction to modify the height of the part even though the slot was the last feature we added to the part. Let's see this again as we add a couple of bosses to the part. This time we'll add some dimensions directly to the profile itself. Profile dimensions will automatically become PMI dimensions when the 3D geometry is created. A quick mirror function will replicate the boss on the opposite side of the part. We'll also add a dimension to control the height of the boss. Notice how Live Rules make sure the boss on the opposite side stays coplanar. Also this dimension can drive the position of the top face of the part even though it was created much earlier in the process. This is all possible due to the fact that synchronous technology is not history dependent. Switching on the rest of the PMI, notice that the dimension controlling the chamfer is coloured red. This means it is locked. When any changes are made, locked dimensions remain at their sat values as we can see. Let's also lock the 20mm dimension so that the thickness remains constant. We can also achieve the same edit results by using our length dimension to drive the part. Perhaps we want the locations of our bosses to stay fixed relative to their position from the back face. Once again all we need to do is lock the appropriate dimensions and our design intent is maintained. We can also apply formula between dimensions and even drive the formula and the geometry via external sources like Excel or Visual Basic. We'll take the width of our slot and maintain its value so it is always 40 millimeters less than the width of the part. As we then make the part wider the slot increases in width too. As you can see applying dimensions directly to the 3D model in order to drive geometry is a very simple process. Since these dimensions are actually PMI dimensions, they can also be used downstream for manufacturing purposes. Also it is worth pointing out that everything we've just seen would work equally well on an imported part. We would have been able to make the very same changes and modifications to this model.